Hey guys, I am live on Facebook right now. And what I'm trying to do is talk to you about um, digital simulation with uh, this aligner system called Sure Smile. Um, I've just started using it particularly for my mild relapse cases to do, um, to do your own aligners in-house. So, you know, I use multiple systems of aligners. Um, for years, I've used Invisalign. Uh, recently, I'm loving Spark from Omco, and I'm doing a lot of Spark. Um, but also, SureSmile has a place where um, I feel the DIY service with SureSmile is extremely amazing, uh, especially if you have a scanner and um, you have a 3D printer and a vacuum forming um, uh, apply, uh, um, uh, machine, you are able to now make them all in house. So we have this model of a patient of mine I treated years ago. Um, this is quite common, didn't, uh, you know, even with bonded retainers, by the way, even if we had given bonded retainers, mild movement can happen, uh, forgot wearing retainers. So we've created a digital model from a new scan and we're simply going to change these models and reset the teeth in these models. So you're gonna see what I'm doing here to move the teeth how I want them to move. You can see the three, two is gone lingual and I'm just trying to bring it labially forward. It's really minor. Um, you, with your smile, you have the ability to add attachment or not add attachment. And as I'm moving these teeth, it's telling me the values of the teeth are moving. So for example, 0.2 millimeter labial movement. Um, this one, I think a little bit of rotation is there. So I might just um, derotate it. Or you can even add lingual uh, or labial root torque. Um, and I just feel it's a good idea to just keep an eye on the tooth from every angle. So not only you should look from occlusal, look from the labial. With the labial, you see it still looks a bit lingual. So I would just move it out a bit more. Um, and we've now created a, a, a reset model. Um, and we simply are sure smile to export this for us in stages. So we have multiple SDL files that are gonna create that movement that I just described. Um, and really, this is reserved for minor cases, although if you have a lot of time on your hand, you could literally do a lot. You could add attachments, you could um, move teeth, you could create stage models up to 50 if you want, but it's also a lot of work for your staff. So currently, we just use Show Smile for mild relapse. Again, I feel this tooth is still needs to come out a bit more labially, um, perhaps uh, a bit of rotation here. And, um, you know, so you've got these blocks you can move. And I just think it looks a lot better than before. Um, I still feel this one is perhaps needs a little rotation again. And um, it's about trying and testing, moving the teeth around, but always look at it from every angle, okay? Because if you just look at it um, just from the occlusal, sometimes you miss the label surface. So again, I feel that we could bring it out a tiny bit more labially and it just looks like in line with the rest of the arc now. So, and if you really wanted to rotate it, give it a little tip, you can do that as well. Do I need attachment for such mild movements? Not really. My rule of thumb is that if you have movements um, that are under half a mil and under you know, five degrees, uh, of any kind of dimension, generally you can get away without attachments if the patient's super compliant and uses some kind of aligner tray seater like chewies, munchies, things like that, okay? Um, so generally these movements end up being predictable, but when it comes to extrusion, rotation, anything over half a mil or five degrees, you kind of need to add attachments. So I've prepared this model, now also, um, we have the upper arch that is also slightly relapsed. The patient's got a slight diastema that's opened up. So what I'm going to do um, is, you know, before his treatment finished, we had decided to have the diastema distal to the canines. So he actually did have some space distal to the canine, but the centrals have opened up. So we could do that. We could move his teeth. Um, firstly, let's rotate it. So the central has 
derotated, and then we could move them um, measly to close the diastema. And you can see it's only half a mil movement. And um, again, you can just zoom in if you're having difficulty looking at it. Um, again, I would move the lateral here just to get the di the, um, the spacing more distal as possible. The patient can later on have a buildup because he did have two side discrepancy. We're doing a rotation here and you can see it's going about 5.9 degrees. So we're starting to go in a realm where at almost eight degrees in a realm where I think we may need an attachment. But when I look from the labial, it also looks a bit tipped. So I'm actually going to also correct the tip as we're doing that. So this tooth is more likely to need an attachment than other teeth because we're going over that threshold, as I said, of five degrees. Now, the laterals are a bit um, small. I'm just going to bring this back up. So, um, and I think that looks overall a lot better. We just look at it from the occlusal aspect. I think because rotations aren't very predictable with the liners, we could actually just overcorrect slightly. Okay, so here we are. We reset his upper and lower teeth on these digital models. I think the three to the lower left lateral incisor does look a little bit quite labially forward. So I think I'm actually going to take it back. It does look a bit, and possibly it's the root angulation. So I'm just going to give it a bit of um, lingual uh, root torque. Okay, so you can kind of move it labially or lingually like that, I think that would be better. And it still looks a bit labial. And this one, there's also uneven wear. When you have uneven wear on incisors, it can also be very difficult to understand how to align them. The small, flat, pin teeth with uneven incisor wear, it can be quite difficult sometimes and quite challenging to align them as well as possible. I'm quite happy with this now because at the end of the day, patient looks at it labially, they look at it occlusally, not so much lingually. Um, perhaps we could still rotate this a little bit more. Okay, so it's, I'm trying to get an ideal class one incisor situation. Um, if you look at his occlusion, that's actually holding up pretty well. He was a class two div two. Um, and it's, it's holding up pretty well. It's almost three, four years in retention now. So most of the relapse that happened was here, lower incisors and upper incisors, um, and small opening of the diastema because he didn't get the buildups done on his upper laterals that are kind of a little bit small. Um, so now that we've done this simulation, we can actually ask um, um, Sure Smile to create stage models. So if we click on create stage models, it's asking us a question. How do you want to resolve the remaining intersection? So do you want to do some IPR because it's detecting a lack of space? We haven't done any expansion on these models. Um, so perhaps in this case, because it's such a limited treatment, I would do some IPR. A bit of lower IPR is not a problem here. And that's because he's got tooth size discrepancy in the upper arch. Um, so it can actually help make things better. Um, it'll ask you how to have your aligners, um, attachments if you want to add, and trim type, okay? So I like my straight trim type. Uh, attachments at this point, I don't really um, want any attachments. I know some of the teeth I showed you were over five degrees, but I still believe if the patient's very compliant, we'll still get it. And um, so I'm going to go for no automatic attachment placement for now, which means stage models are going to be created for this patient that will actually show me um, the, uh, the movie. You can even export a movie for your patients to show them what you're planning. Um, and then you can export this to your SDL, uh, so your 3D printer. They can print the SDL files and then your team can make the vacuum formed aligners for the patient. Now aligner materials are very, very different. This is an area where it's showing me how many aligners are involved. So usually the last aligner is the retainer. So obviously in upper arch, um, there's about eight aligners, lower arch, seven aligners. So it's not a very difficult case. Um, and this DIY simplicity just makes it very, very easy for you to do it in your own um, uh, office. 
So we can place attachments if we want. It's showing us the movements of certain teeth, how much we're moving them. As I said, this stage, I'm not really convinced I want attachments. So I'm gonna simply um, place the order, right? So I'm just gonna go and I'm happy with these. Um, you can even play a movie later on. I can show you later on. You can actually export the movie. So I'm just gonna say, no, let's just go to the order. And let's just go ahead and order this. So here, I have multiple choices with Show Smile. So I've got my movie here, by the way, that shows you the movements. If we look at the lower arch, um, you will see if I play the movie. So this is at zero, this is at final stage. And if we go here to the first stage, you can see how the three, two is moving quite labially. Okay. And there's IPR due as well. The upper arch too shows you the movement that we've planned in the movie. So eight is where we're gonna stop. One is where we're starting from, so you can see the rotations, okay? Um, so you can order 3D prints, you can order and export SDL, or you can actually um, order aligners. So if you don't wanna make them yourself, you've got all these different options, which I actually love in this system. Um, we like to make our own aligners when it, it's under 15. So if it's under 15 aligners or you know around 10 to 15, we'll make our own. So I'm gonna say, let's export uh, my SDLs create me a new export. Um, the ninth is your retainer stage. And a lot of times I don't want it because there's a chance, I just wanna print my uh, active aligners, okay? I don't wanna print the last one, just in case I am still wanting a bit more treatment at the end. So lower finishes at seven, upper finishes at eight. So we're just gonna say, look, create me an order for that, okay? Um, as I said, you can choose to place attachments. That way you have to make a template as well uh, with the suck down machine. So this has been uh, submitted pretty much within a few minutes, two or three minutes, my STL files will be here, all numbered. Uh, upper will be numbered, lower will be numbered. And we can now send it to our printer, print them, make the aligners um, and issue them to the patient within days. So this this entire process can take just a few hours. Um, making your aligners, uh, eight aligners in a, in a busy orthodontic practice could take another day. Uh, we have a technician who makes a lot of these all day. And then, um, you know, you could be potentially issuing these to the patient within a couple of days, you know, um, two, three days, and they're starting their treatment. So loving this new system. And I just wanted to share with you um, how I use it for mild relapse, um, moving the teeth, especially when the occlusion is great, your expansion's fine, it's mild relapse, and you're simply wanting to reset some teeth to a very limited degree. It's a great DIY system for in-house 3D printed uh, models and aligners. So thank you guys for watching, um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this.